play Tywin, uh, does his fans ever walk up to him and pat themselves on the back? Oh, definitely. Yeah. They'll, they'll pat me or they'll tell me to pat them. Um, uh, yes, it does happen. Yeah. Or they'll look at me. I mean, they'll just look at me. They'll go, hey, they, they don't say my name. I mean, I'm in the mall or across from the gym. That means I know you. And then I go, thank you. <laughs> don't ever do that again. It's a, a gimmick infringement. <laughs> you <laughs> I'm get Jewish. I'll sue you. <laughs> you, get, you get one for free. That's it. Yes, uh, where yes. did that first come from then? Uh, I know a lot of people ask this as well. Where did the pat on the back first come from? Well, I was in an amateur wrestling match in Florida, where I'm from, St. Petersburg. And I was doing really well on points. And for some reason, I just, I don't know why, what made me think, maybe I saw it in a movie, who knows? And I didn't do it, the professional wrestling style. I just, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I got yelled at by the coach. I got disqualified. I got points taken out. But in my mind, I knew I was going to be a pro wrestler. And I knew I would be a heel. And I put that, however you want to say it, in the back pocket, in the computer bank. And I saved it. And then when I did get it and fine tune it and done right and no overkill, it worked. Mm -hmm. It worked. It worked. And nobody, you know, I've seen people copy it, a couple. And um, it's, it's flattery, but I never want to be that guy. I want to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, you know, it's like me coming out and going, hey, James, what's going on, brother? I would never do that. You know what I mean? I just don't, I don't do that. You know, I want to be unique and stand out. Well, something else that helped you be unique and stand out was your attire. Uh, this fellow here, Ibsan Arroyo, uh, asks, whatever happened to the jacket with your handprint? Does the WWF have it now in a warehouse? Wow, that's cool. Probably, no, no they don't. Um, I actually sold that at a wrestling auction. Oh. And the only reason I do keep certain things, and maybe I should have kept that, and there's a story and a secret about that jacket. Okay. Okay. That jacket was originally owned and worn in global wrestling by the handsome stranger. I know who that is. Tell us who it okay. is. Okay. Not too many people know it, and I don't mind saying it. And Mark reminds me at almost every meet and greet about that. I bought it from him. I liked it. I had it tailored. And that hand on the back was free drawn on a piece of cardboard by me. Then I had a seamstress do that. Mm. So I did sell it at an auction maybe four years ago. Um, yeah, a lot of people comment. I, I'm sure I can get it replicated. Uh, whoever made that for Marcus, uh, quality. It was mm. heavy. That jacket was heavy. Had to get a special bag for it and this, this and that. But People do remark about it because I had other ones, but nothing of that quality. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty cool uh, thing. I think almost I've heard I've said it on other interviews and maybe Mark has, too. But, uh, yeah, that was the Handsome Strangers uh, um, jacket. By the way, that's kind of cool name too, the Handsome Stranger. What a gimmick. I like it. And the, uh, you said Marcus, Marcus Alexander ba Bagwell, wasn't it? His, was that, his, that was his first yeah. job. I believe. Was uh, it? Yes, as far as I know, I think he was discovered in Georgia by Bill Eady. I'm not positive on that. And that Buff Bagwell gimmick, I you know how some things just click. The name, the look, Buff. It's great. Whoever thought of that, I love it. I, I just love those those flamboyant names when they or or when they have double meaning. Like for instance, B. Brian Blair. I like you the, see what I mean? The, the alliteration. Going? I love stuff like that. Yeah. Coco, beware. That's so cool. You, you don't find too many names like that. No. They're unique. 